Hi, I'm Jing, an engineer on the Open Health Stack team at Google Health. Our mission at Google Health is to help billions of people be healthier, and we believe in the potential of mobile-based tools to help us achieve this. With Open Health Stack, our goal is to help accelerate the future of digital health by making it easier for developers everywhere to build next-generation healthcare apps. Previously in this series, we introduced the Android Fire SDK, a set of Kotlin libraries to help you build Android apps using the HL7 Fire standard. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Fire Engine library in the SDK to build an offline capable Android app that can securely store, manage, and sync Fire resources on device. Before we get into the details, it's important to note that the Fire Engine library is a Kotlin library you can add to the dependencies of your app. It is compiled into the APK and is not a separate service running on the device. This means your app has total control of any data you choose to store, as well as any communication with any Fire server. If you're not already familiar with the Fire standard, you can head to the official documentation. There are also plenty of free tutorials and videos online readily available for you to learn more about Fire. Now, let's take a look at the architecture of the Fire Engine library. The backbone of the Fire Engine library is an encrypted SQLite database we have created to store Fire resources. On top of this database, we have built three APIs to manage the Fire resources. The Data Access API provides basic CRUD, or create, read, update, and delete operations. The Search API lets you search the local Fire resources in the database using a programmatic interface we have built. And last but not least, the Sync API connects your application with the Fire server and allows your app to keep Fire resources stored on device synced with the server. Now, let's take a look at how to use the Fire Engine APIs. If you want to follow along in Android Studio, you can use the link below to download the code of the sample app we are building here. After adding the Fire Engine dependency in the build file of your application, as shown now, you need to initialize a Fire Engine instance to be used throughout your application's lifecycle. This must be done only once. We recommend doing this in the onCreate function of your application class to make sure this happens during the initialization phase of your app. To create the Fire Engine instance, use the Fire Engine Provider class and call Fire Engine Provider .init with the Fire Engine configuration. In the configuration, you can specify database configs regarding encryption, as well as network configs, such as the Fire Server's base URL or timeout thresholds for network communication. Our API documentation includes full details of these configs. Now, anywhere in your application, you can simply grab the Fire Engine instance by calling the Fire Engine Provider's get instance function with the context. Using Fire Engine's Data Access API is easy. Because of the Fire Engine dependency, the happy structures will have already been transitively included in your app. So you can use the Java classes defined in happy structures to represent Fire resources. Here's an example of a new Fire patient with the assigned ID, gender, and name. Now, simply call the Fire Engine's create function, and the patient's resource is now persisted in Fire Engine's database. You can then read it from the database using the get API, update the patient's details using the update API, or delete the patient from the database using the delete API. In your app, you may have hundreds or thousands of Fire resources, and you may need to find a particular resource or a list of resources. This is where the Search API comes in handy. We have created a Kotlin DSL, or domain-specific language, in Fire Engine to implement the Search functionality. This makes the Search API more fluent and enables auto-completion in Android Studio. To see how the Search DSL works, let's look at some examples. Let's say the user of your app wants to look up a patient by name. This can be done by calling the Search API with a patient type parameter and using the filter clause. Here, we are filtering all patients by the given name, and we're looking for patients whose given name exactly matches Kieran. Pay attention to the search parameter included in the filter clause. In Fire Engine, we have built-in support for all search parameters defined in all Fire resources. The full list can be found in the Fire Specifications Search Parameter Registry or at the bottom of the page for each resource. You can also pass multiple search criteria in the same filter. When you do this, the search criteria are joined together using logical OR. In this example, we are looking for patients whose given name is Kieran or John. When multiple filters are used, they are by default joined together using logical AND. In this example, we are looking for patients whose first name is Kieran and the family name is Smith. You can change this using the operation field. For example, now we are looking for patients whose first name is Kieran or family name is Smith. 
The search API also supports forward and reverse include defined in file search. In this example, the has function allows you to search for patients with an observation resource referencing the patient and meeting certain filter criteria. The search API supports a range of different filter types, like partial matching of strings, mean or max values on number, or less than or greater than filters on dates. Take a look at our API documentation for the full syntax. Now, let's take a look at the Sync API. To use the Sync API, you first need to make sure the server configuration is provided when you initialize the file engine. In this example, we have provided a base URL of the file server, an HTTP logger, as well as network config to allow for gzip and authentication by bearer token. To define your sync job, you need to implement the file sync worker class and provide four components. First, the file engine instance you have created. Second, your implementation of the download worker manager interface. This tells your sync job what to download from the server and how to handle the downloaded resources. You will also need to specify the upload strategy. For example, you can send a single request for each change you have made locally to the file resources, or you can batch local changes together to reduce the number of round trips to the server. Which upload strategy works for you depends on your network constraints as well as the capabilities of the file server. And finally, the conflict resolver. This controls how conflicts between the local and remote versions of the same resource are resolved. For example, you can either accept the local version or accept the remote version. We are not going to look at the implementation details of this class, but we have included examples in our code base and API documentation. Now that you have set up your file sync worker, you can start syncing with the remote server. To trigger a user-initiated sync, you can use the sync.onetimesync API. If you would like to collect the state of sync job status as it updates, perhaps to update the UI or inform your user when the sync job is done, you can collect the job like this. We can also sync at repeated intervals with the remote server as well by using the sync.periodic sync API. Similarly to the one-time sync API, you can also collect the sync job status as well for the periodic sync job. Now, you have set up bidirectional sync between your app and the file server. To demonstrate the APIs of the file engine library, we have also built a demo app which you can build in Android Studio and run on your own device. To recap, in this video, We've covered the architecture of the Fire Engine library and the three Fire Engine APIs, the Data Access API, the Search API, and the Sync API. For more details, head to OpenHealthStack's developer site and our GitHub repository. To keep learning about how to build with OpenHealthStack, check out the next video in our series. Thank you.